Welcome to Peace and Hope. We are so glad that you're with us today. Whether it's your first time with us or if you've been here before, we welcome you here. As we go through the next couple of weeks, we're looking at what does it mean to be Peace and Hope. We are the church. We are Peace and Hope. So we'll be going through and talking about different topics, about what it means to be a member of this community, but really as a member of the, the church of the world, right? The church of all believers, all part of God's kingdom. On seven, at 7.30 at night on Wednesdays through Lent, we will have Lenten services. So I'd encourage you to, uh, to come join us on Wednesdays during Lent and, uh, and participate in that opportunity with us. That's all I have for announcements. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prelude. We continue worship with our confession and promise of forgiveness. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. i 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter all of us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from here or from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem! the city that kills the prophets and stones those who were sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. We continue our worship series on We Are Peace and Hope, a five-week series asking important questions about who we are as a community and where we want to go. Last week we explored the question, how do we want to lead, and focused on several leadership examples from Moses. This week I want you to ponder for a moment when we say all people, do we really mean all people? As I was working with our ministry team to start Peace and Hope, we wanted to make sure that we developed a digital community from the ground up that would truly be a community for all people. Our mission statement says, connected together through Jesus Christ, we are com a community of people and congregations called to share God's love for all people through worship and service. Our vision statement says, through peace and hope and our ministry partners, we are called to provide a Christ-centered digital community where all God's people are welcomed and affirmed so that they may experience the peace and hope that comes through the Holy Spirit. 
So our mission statement guides us to who we are as a community today, and our vision sets a goal of where we want to be. And yes, we absolutely mean that we want to be a digital community centered on Christ where all God's people are welcomed and affirmed. One of my proudest moments in campus ministry at Virginia Tech was when the leadership team was reviewing the mission statement and chose to make a small but very important change to that mission statement. Originally, it said this, because God loves us and calls us to love, we welcome and invite others to engage and grow in faith. Through discipleship and active service in our community, we are able to intentionally deepen our relationship with God and one another. I mean, that sounds like a really good mission statement, right? But as the leadership team was sitting around and talking about it, we realized that we didn't seek to invite others we want to invite all people so with that we changed the mission statement to read that we welcome and invite all to engage and grow in faith have you ever heard of a type of people who are just referred to as those people right those people might have been people that your parents or others told you to stay away from those people might have been people that led complicated and messy lives. Those people might be people who are outside traditional social circles. But really, who are those people? And should we ever consider anyone to just be those people? Remember this, even our biblical heroes had their moments and became the type of people that our parents would tell us to not spend time with sometimes. Take Noah, for example. Yes, the Noah in Genesis who listened to God's call, built an ark, spent 40 days and 40 nights on the ark to save his family and all the animals. But do you know what happens next? Do you know what happens after the boat lands? Literally right after we find out about God's promise through a rainbow, we find in scripture that Noah was planting a vineyard, producing wine, and became drunk. And not only was Noah drunk, but he was passed out drunk inside his tent, naked. Noah might have become one of those people that you would be told to stay away from. If you think about the lectionary reading from the Gospel of Luke today, we encounter a Jesus who is warned to get away from Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem was considered a holy city, the holiest city in Judaism. Yet Jesus says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. Keep in mind, Jesus himself was outside of the circle. Jesus would have been considered one of those people. And don't fool yourselves. Try as we might, there are always circles. People are inside of circles and people are outside of circles. There are people that we want to spend time with and those that we don't. There are people that we would hire and people we would not. There are people we would want to invest time into and people we don't. And all kinds of organizations have circles. Now keep in mind, not all circles are bad. Support groups and advocacy groups have circles that are intentional and allow for the protection of their members and create safe spaces for people to gather. There may be some circles that you've experienced where you felt very uncomfortable. For instance, I am not an overly fancy person. So if I were invited to a fancy restaurant where people had to dress up all fancy-like and they offered fancy exotic food and exotic drinks and a bunch of different plates and utensils all over the place. I, I wouldn't really be in my comfort zone and I would feel that I was on the outside of the circle. But when you think about it, there are so many circles that exist. There are Republican circles, Democrat circles, Christian circles, non-Christian circles, vaxxers, anti-vaxxers, are you from a city? Are you from a town? You name it. Circles everywhere. 
and the people inside a circle constantly look at people outside the circle and refer to them as those people. And a lot of times, the conclusion that's made is not fair at all. And sadly, churches are notorious for creating circles. While I'm not saying anything specific about peace and hope or your home community, there is a tendency to determine who is in and who is out, who will fit in here and who won't. You need to dress a certain way. You need to look a certain way. You need to love a certain way. And in many ways, churches create the circles very overtly. Now, I understand the various theologies and that there are sometimes some reasons for it, but think about it. In some churches, women can be pastors, and in others, they can't. In some churches, my queer brothers and sisters can be pastors, and in others, they can't. In some churches, all Christians are invited to the communion table, and in other churches, they aren't. In some churches, two people cannot be married unless they come from the same religious tradition. In some churches, only couples who are heterosexual are able to be married inside the church. Again, many churches make the case that these circles are necessary, and I won't argue that point because different churches and different people interpret the gospel differently. But I believe that Romans has a lot to tell us about how we are to act. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 tell us, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Maybe the way we have always done things is not necessarily the right way. The Apostle Paul is creating a vision of what it means to be the church. What he's saying is don't conform to a culture that says if you don't like someone's politics that you cancel them. Don't conform to a culture that says if you don't agree with someone's religious views or their views about gun violence or masking or COVID or anything else, that you should cancel them. No. Instead, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 5, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each one of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. I'm sure you have heard this before, but think about what this scripture is saying. You cannot write anyone else off. There are no other people. Each person belongs to each other. And Jesus didn't say that we had to be right. What Jesus said is that we need to love. Verse 16 says, Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Why do we see these things happening all around us? Jesus didn't say the world will know us by how correct we are. No, Jesus said they will know us by how loving we are. So you see, my friends, all people literally means all people. And Romans chapter 8 tells us so, starting in verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God that is Christ Jesus our Lord. Our lectionary reading today from Philippians reminds us that despite the times that we create our own circles, we ultimately all belong to the Lord. The reading says this, Our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. So here at Peace and Hope, I challenge you to always think of people as just simply people. We are all part of the one family as citizens of God's kingdom. There are no classifications. We don't have these people and those people. We are just all people. We are part of the all people. We are not any more worthy of God's grace than anyone else. Always remember this. All are welcome here. You are welcome here. You don't need to have all the answers. You don't need to perfect. be perfect. Just come as you are. Amen. As a community gathered in Christ, we express our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawing close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Let us pray. You create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystems and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience and re to receive criticism. Openness to new ideas and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You hear us when we cry to you. Attend those expecting a child and console those who have experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You love your children as you have called and created them to be. We pray for our queer siblings who are being told that their queerness that you created and celebrate needs to be hid away. Change the hearts of leaders who do not see the beauty of our siblings and allow them to see the fullness of your beloved creation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth are ended and who now rest with you. On the final day, gather all of us with them in your loving arms. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. At this time, share the peace with those around you, whether online or in your own homes. As God's people, we are called to give, called to give of our time, our talents, and our resources. If you're a member of an existing church home, please remember to keep providing your contributions and your gifts. If you're looking for a place to provide support, I'd encourage you to consider Peace and Hope, uh, and the information for providing gifts is found on the link below. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we go, we go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
join us in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.